And what's up, Facebook? Prophet David Taylor here, coming to you with another Thursday night teaching. All right, now, just to give a brief recap. Now, when you come on to the video, please like and share, because you hear me say it every week when God gives a prophetic word, we want that word to go around the world, because it's going to bless somebody. It's going to make a difference in somebody's life. Sometimes it even saves lives. Sometimes a prophetic word from the Lord can pull people back from the brink of suicide. So when you come on to this video, please like and share. So going on the better part of a year and a half, maybe two full years now, on the second Thursday nights, I've been teaching a series called No More Genies. That's what the hashtag NMG stands for in the video title, No More Genies. Now, what that means is that we're trying to move away from the genie concept of God, thinking that God is magic or thinking that faith is magic or thinking that all you have to do is rub the lamp or say a few magic words or there's some kind of formula uh, that you apply and you're going to get all these blessings that God is somehow just going to wave his mighty hand over your life and fix all your problems and that you don't have to do anything. And that it doesn't take any effort on your part. And that there's no choice and consequence relationship. And none of that is true. None of that is true in the Bible and none of that is true in life. But I've discovered as I have lived that a lot of our religious, when I say our, I mean many American Protestants, not everybody. But many American Protestants in terms of our background, what we have been taught has been a genie concept a concept where, because we're under grace, that we can just live any kind of way we want to live, and that isn't true. A concept where all we have to do is say the magic word, and, you know, God is just going to wave his hand and solve all of our problems, and that's not true. <laughs> and uh, just so many things that we believe that are wrong. So I can't, you know, do the series justice, because I've been working on it now, like I said, about a year and a half or two years. So I strongly encourage that you go back to the beginning of this series, look at the first video, because I go into detail. Um, but long story short, in many of our American Protestant religious circles, we preach what we call the gospel of Jesus Christ, but we do not preach the gospel that Jesus Christ preached. We preach uh, born again, born again, get saved, get saved, go to church, go to church, Miss hell, miss hell, go to heaven when you die. And that is not what Jesus preached. That is not what the Lord preached. The Lord preached the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of God is like this. The kingdom of heaven is like under this. That was the heart. That was the core of his message. Now, he did mention hell, and we're going to see that in the parable that we look at tonight. The Lord did talk about hell, but that wasn't the heart of what he preached, like it seems to be many times the heart of what we preach. That it's all about that. And, uh, he instead preached the kingdom. The kingdom of God is like this. The kingdom of God is like that. Okay? So what I've been doing for the, for the last uh, several sessions is I've been looking at the parables of Jesus and I've been looking at the times in the New Testament where Jesus said, and the Bible said, the kingdom of God is like. The kingdom of God is like this. And so if you've been following this series, then you realize by now that a whole lot of things that we deal with could have been cleaned up and cleared up by now, and a whole lot of things that we've been taught from our religious backgrounds are wrong, and our perspective can be completely changed once we start preaching and teaching what Jesus actually preached and taught. And again, he did mention hell, and that's in the parable tonight, but I'm saying the heart of his message was the kingdom, and so that's what tonight's message, message is about. I'm going on to the next parable. But let's say a word of prayer, and then we're going to jump right in. Father, in the name of Jesus, to come before you, thanking you for uh, this grace in which we stand, and rejoice in hope of the glory of God, according to Jesus Christ, which is our peace. Oh God, we ask you to forgive us for all sin, to cleanse us by the blood of Jesus, Lord, to fill me with the Holy Ghost, let my mouth be filled with your words, fill my eyes, my hands, every part of me, so you can literally breathe through me, O oh God, and let be spoken what you want spoken. Oh God, so be with us on tonight. Let your word go, for, go forth to glorify you and to edify those that are listeners and to challenge the unbelievers. 
O oh God, to turn from their unbelief and turn from their ways and to turn to you, to believe, to faith in you, in the name of Jesus and in the word of God and into your ways that they might enjoy the life you have for them now and bear fruit unto life eternal in your kingdom, the only kingdom that's going to stand forever. And we thank you for it and we believe you for it in Jesus' name, amen. All right, now, uh, some quick housekeeping uh, before we uh, jump into the message. Uh, my website is prophetdavidtaylor.org, P-R-O-P-H-E-T-D-A-V-I-D-T-A-Y-L-O-R.org, prophetdavidtaylor.org. So I encourage you to go there because I have all my latest stuff there. Uh, like I just released my prophetic devotional. I'm so excited about it. Um, I should have had some in my hand by now, but there was a mix up in the mail, if you can believe that. But I was talking to my son about it earlier today, and I'm like, I'm praising God. I've learned how to rejoice in tribulation because that means if the devil's trying to stop it, that means there's some power in it. That means it's gonna, God is going to use it to glorify himself and change lives. So praise God for that. But I have a daily prophetic devotional where you can begin or strengthen your walk in the prophetic with God. Every day focuses on a new scripture that deals with prophets or prophetic experience or prophecy. And you meditate on that scripture. You hear what the Holy Spirit has to say to you about that scripture. But you also get to write it down journal style. And there's a section and come back later to see how that word has come to pass. And so you can see how the victory from that word is playing out in your life. Okay. So I'm very, very excited about it. So there's going to be four per year, one per quarter. So right now this is quarter one. So January, February, March is available now, and you can order it uh, on my website. Uh, it is $9.99, so it's not expensive. And then I have one where you can get uh, a blank page behind each page if you want to write on it. So that's a special order, but that's $12.99. So they're not expensive, so easily affordable, but they will really bless your walk in the prophetic. Okay? I got so many good things coming up this year, uh, more of my music. Uh, I don't know if you know about my ministry. It's entitled Shades of the Cross, and I'll be explaining more of what that means, but more of my music is going to be released this year because I'm not just a prophetic teacher or preacher or uh, just not prophetic with words, but also I'm a psalmist and a minstrel. I'm a songwriter and a musician, and God has gifted me in the prophetic there as well. And that's a whole different set of teaching about that. And so that's going to be coming forth more this year. And I'm just so excited, super excited. So, yeah, so be sure that you go to prophetdavidtaylor.org and uh, subscribe to my uh, list. I don't send out any spam because I hate spam, so I don't get it. But I send out alerts whenever something new drops, like every time one of these new teachings drops. And uh, there's a podcast now. So it's a podcast of these teaching, but it's got, you know, a few little extra things on it. So I'm just really excited about 2020, and I just want to thank all of you that have been supportive. And if you want to support my ministry finance, financially, you can give through Zelle. ProfitDavidTaylor at gmail.com is my Zelle. So all these links are going to be on the YouTube video and on the Facebook Live page. Um, but also, I'm also simulcasting on Periscope, which also is posting on my Twitter as well. Okay? So, just want to do that little bit of housekeeping. So now let's dive into the Word. And as I said, we've been reading about the parables of Jesus, about what Jesus actually preached concerning the kingdom of God. Tonight we're going to look at the parable of the net. And it is so powerful. I mean, I know they're all powerful, but this is so, so powerful and so life-changing. Okay? So we're looking at Matthew, first book in the New Testament. Matthew chapter 13, verses 47 through 52. I'm going to be reading out of the NIV, the New International Version, and also the Berean Study Bible. Okay, here we go. Matthew chapter 13, verses 47 through 52. Once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, the fishermen pulled it up on the shore. Then they sat down and collected the good fish in baskets, but threw the bad away. This is how it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the blazing furnace, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things? Jesus asked. 
Yes, they replied. He said to them, Therefore every teacher of the law who has become a disciple in the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a house who brings out of his storeroom new treasures as well as old. Wow! Just wow! All that, what the Lord just said is mind-blowing. So we're going to dive into that, okay? Now, he said, once again, so that phrase, once again, means that he's giving yet another parable. I explained to you before why the Lord taught in parables. The reason he taught in parables is because parables are stories, and parables are similes. When something is like something, that's a simile. When we say something is something, that's a metaphor. When we say something is like, the kingdom of heaven is like, that's a simile. So the reason that the Lord taught in parables and similes was because he knew that this word uh, had to last for, hey, Mary, God bless you. Good to see you. He knew that this word had to last and it had to go unto all generations, unto different ethnic groups, unto different ages, unto different kinds of people. So when you teach in stories, stories are transportable from culture to culture and generation to generation. And when you teach in simile, when you say something is like something, then that means you're taking something that you do know and comparing it to the new information so you can have a picture <coughs> excuse me, of what the Lord is talking about. You see that? So, so he says, once again, or in other words, I'm going to show you again what the kingdom of heaven is like. The kingdom of heaven is like, now remember that word heaven, that word heaven coming out of the Greek, uh, means uh, the sky, heaven, happiness, power, eternity. Okay? So you can substitute any of those words when you hear uh, the word heaven when it's using that Greek word. The kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet that was cast into the sea and caught fish of every kind. Now let's look at that word dragnet in English. It's a fishing net. Okay? It's a fishing net and it's probably a seine net. And if you don't know what a seine net is for fishing, uh, one end of the dragnet is held on the shore, and then the other end is dragged into the sea and returned to the shore. So you got one anchor here, and then that net goes all in the sea, and then the other side of the net is anchored there. So the Lord said his kingdom is like a big old fishing net, okay? And in fishing terms, that's called the seine, seine net, and uh, he said that's what his kingdom is like. So right off the bat, I stop by to tell you that if you've ever been made to feel what they call now marginalized by anybody or by a church, I stop by to tell you that was not God. Have you ever felt like a small fish in a big pond? I think we all do uh, at certain times. Have you ever felt like that, you know, there are certain people who are more visible or certain people that are more, get more attention, whatever you felt? The Lord said that his kingdom is actually like a huge fishing net. And what that means is that he's including you. I can't tell you the number of times in my life that understanding that Jesus was including me just saved my sanity. Because the Lord sees you when nobody else sees you. The Lord cares when nobody else cares. You know, as humans, we respond to each other based on our level of attractiveness. If people think you're attractive, they treat you differently than if they think you don't. And we respond to each other based on our level of somebodiness, meaning if people think you're somebody, they treat you differently than people that they don't, okay? And that's why a lot of people can feel marginalized and minimalized, but the Lord said that his kingdom is like a dragnet. It's like a big old fishing net. So in other words, he's out to expose his kingdom. He's out to catch as many fish as he can. He sees you, okay? Very, very important. It says, so the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet that was cast into the sea and caught fish of every kind. Lord have mercy. If there's one complaint that I've consistently heard in my life concerning the church from both church people and non-church people, from both saints and sinners, you know what it is? It's that. There's so many different kinds of people in church, and some of them folks is phony, and all them folks ain't living right, and they blah, 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 blah. And I stopped by to tell you, the word said that his, his kingdom is like a dragnet that's going to catch fish of every kind. It's going to be some of everybody. 
caught by the net. There's going to be some of everybody in the Lord's kingdom at first. So you can't let that throw you. Now this parable is unique because in most of the other parables, the Lord used his simile style of teaching and kind of left it there. But in some of the parables, he did explain what his similes meant. And some he didn't. This is the one where he explains in very plain detail. But what I want you to know is that the word says it caught fish of every kind. That's why any church you go to, there's all kinds of people. Uh, and I don't mean necessarily multicultural. I'll get to that in a minute. But I mean personalities. I mean levels of faith. I mean, you know, levels of how committed they are to serving God. There's all kinds of people there where the Lord said, that's what his kingdom is like. So you need to stop being surprised. <laughs> because uh, I declare, it seems that both saints and sinners, both believers and unbelievers, seem to believe that if you get around a body of believers, that everybody's going to be living right, or everybody's going to be living at the same level, or every, everybody's got the same level of faith, or everybody's going to be the same, and that they ain't the same, that they ain't really Christians, or they ain't really saved, and that's not what the Lord said. He said that his net's going to catch fish going to catch fish of every kind. But there's some division coming up. We're going to get to that in a minute. Okay? And then it says, when it was full, the men pulled it ashore. Then they sat down and sorted the good fish into containers. Oh, and but threw the bad away. They sat down and sorted the good fish into containers, but threw the bad away. That means that in this age, in this time, going to be some bad fish mixed in with the good fish. Okay? That is not new. When they got ready to take the promised land, only Joshua and Caleb believed God, but everybody else was unbelieving. It was mixed in with the folks that did believe. Okay? Many times Moses had to ask the children of Israel who's on the Lord's side. And a lot of the people that were sinning against God got killed. And those that feared God got spared and delivered. Okay, Ananias and Sapphira in the New Testament conspired in their hearts to make a pledge they were going to give the church a certain amount of money and sell their property for a certain amount of money. But they lied. They lied about the purchase price and they lied about their pledge. And Peter busted them through the Holy Ghost and both of them died. So this whole idea... <laughs> That that everybody is the same and everybody serving God the same and ain't no good fish or bad fish in God's kingdom at first is not true. So you need to stop being surprised by that. And then the Lord said that there's going to come a point that the good fish. Uh, now that word there, good in, in English, it means by implication, uh, valuable or virtuous. Okay, it means that the righteous people are going to be sorted into containers are going to be separated. And the bad are going to be thrown away. But then the Lord says this in verse 49. So will it be at the end of the age. Stop. What did Jesus just tell you? He told you that this age is coming to an end. Now that word there coming out of the Greek means an age by extension of perpetuity, the world, or messianic period. So in other words, in plain English, what that means is that we only have so long for the earth to remain like it is now, where, you know, where the word of God comes forth and God is reaching out to mankind as God and God is trying to get people to get saved and God is trying to bring people into the kingdom. We only have so long for that to happen. And the day is going to come where that age is over, where that stops, where that's not going to happen anymore. And I want you to imagine have you ever thought about what would happen if you went to your local church and it was boarded up? What if it was boarded up? What if there were chains on the doors? What if there, the lights were, were off, it was dim, and there was no church, and there was no place to go? There's going to come a day where this age that we're living in now, with everything that the way it's going now, where God is going to end this age, and the Lord says, so it will be at the end of the age. And then he goes on to describe in detail what that means and what that's going to look like. He said, the angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous. One more time, the angels are going to separate the wicked, that word wicked there, it means evil, bad, wicked, malicious, and slothful. That means if you're lazy and you're unproductive, God calls you wicked. That lines up with the Lord, with what the Lord said about the parable of the talents that the man that hid his talent in the earth and didn't do anything with it 
the Lord called him thou wicked and lazy servant. Okay? So if you're lazy, if you're slowful, God counts that as wickedness too. So he's going to separate the wicked from the righteous. Okay? So there's going to come a point where angels are, are moving among people. And they're going to be separating out the people that believe in God and the people that are holy and the people that have been faithful to the Lord from the people that don't and haven't been. Okay? And then the Lord tells us what's going to happen next. He says he's going to throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, here again, the Lord is mentioning the final fiery judgment. Now, he does not mention any of the words that represent hell in this passage. There's the English word hell, but uh, in Hebrew and Greek, there's sheol, which means the underworld. There's Gehenna, which means uh, a flaming garbage dump. And then there's Tartarus, which means the prison for the fallen angels, for the demons, and, uh, that's underneath the earth. That's only in 1 Peter 3, 6, the only time that word is used. But uh, in English, we see the word hell, but it could be could mean Sheol, it could mean Gehenna, and that one time in the Bible, it means Tartarus. He does not use any of those words here, but he does use what in English amounts to fiery furnace. Uh, that word fiery there coming out of the Greek is pyros. That's where we get, you know, pyromaniacs from, people that love fire, or pyrokinetics, people that have telekinesis with fire, but that's more superhero stuff. Uh, the heat of the sun, lightning, uh, the eternal fire, a prior, primary word, and then furnace, which it says a furnace, an oven, a kiln, like they bake uh, clay in, like they bake pottery things in. Okay, so the Lord says there's a fiery furnace waiting for the people that do not believe in Christ, waiting at the end of this age. And then he says where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Teeth. Now, let me tell you the difference between crying, weeping, and gnashing your teeth. When you cry, that's just tears coming out of your eyes. Tears can come to your eyes because your eyes are irritated, uh, because you're sad, uh, because your eyes are, uh, again, irritated, or maybe some wind is blowing, you got something stuck in them. Whole different, uh, lots of reasons why you can cry. But when you weep, your deepest emotions are down here in your gut, down here in your belly. And your deepest emotions never come with tears. And when you start talking about how you really feel down here, something breaks open down in your gut. And then all these tears come out, but also a wailing sound comes out. Like a, an ambulance, like a, or like a fire truck. Or you know what those sirens sound like? That's what it means to wail. The Lord said that people are going to be weeping. And another passage says he's going to be wailing. Now, to gnash your teeth, you know what that means? That means to do this. It means, uh, uh, that's what it means to gnash your teeth. Uh. And normally when we do something like that, we cuss with it. Now, I'm not going to cuss to demonstrate, but you understand, we, uh, uh, that's what it means to gnash your teeth. So that means that at the end of the age, there's going to be people who are crying and wailing and trying to find somebody to blame for the fact that they're going into the fiery furnace. They're going to try to find somebody to blame. And that's why I want to encourage those of you that are ministers of the gospel to keep on preaching and teaching and doing what you're doing. Keep on letting the, the preach word and the prophetic word and the apostolic word and the evangelical word and the taught word come forth out of your mouth. Because God is reaching out his hand to humanity now in this age. And he's trying to give people a chance to be saved. And I know how we respond to that because I know how we work as people. As people, we tend to be sight walkers. As people, we tend to wait until we see something before we believe it or take it seriously. But by the time you see it, it's too late. And what the Lord is saying here is that this age is going to come to an end. So we need to get right with God now. Okay? Because there is going to come a point where the Lord will have cast out his net and brought in all kinds of people. But then the angel are, angels are going to come among us and pick out. Don't you want to be one of the ones that the angels pick out to be on the good side? When angels come to see you and they see the seal of the Holy Ghost on your forehead and they see that your heart has been circumcised and that you covered by the blood of Christ and they say, you come over here to the good side. You, you over here part of the righteous. Don't you remember what it felt like in gym class? In gym class when they would pick teams and sometimes depending on the sport, if you were good at the sport, you got picked first and if they didn't want you, they picked you last. Remember that feeling of getting picked last? <laughs> Uh, to be on a gym team? Well, I want you to imagine on a much larger scale that the angels of God are walking among wherever we are 
and they count you as unrighteous and they say, you don't get picked to come over here on the righteous side. You're going to stay over there on the wicked side. And the Lord said, there's a fiery furnace. You're going to get dumped into the fiery furnace and you're going to burn. Wow. See, so when the Lord does mention hell, he's not playing. He's not playing games. And he said, there's going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth. There's going to be a lot of crying. Do you know what people are going to be crying? I can tell you what they're going to be crying. You know what they're going to say? They're going to say, God, give me another chance. They're going to say, God, please have mercy on my soul. They're going to say, Lord, this isn't right. I'm a good person. Uh, you know, look at, all, look at all the good things I did in my life. Or I don't deserve this. This isn't fair. They're going to say all the things. Uh, that they say now, actually, but they're going to say all that kind of stuff, but it's going to be too late. You can't be too good to be saved. You can't be too bad to be saved, but you can be too late to be saved. That's what I know people don't understand. Let me say that one more time. You can't be too good to be saved, no matter where you think you are, your morals and your ethics. You still need Jesus, but you can be saved. You can't be too bad to be saved, no matter how long you sink, but you can be too late. You can be too late to be saved. It can be too late. Your time can run out. So the Lord said for this entire age, time's going to run out at some point in the future. Then he goes on in verse 51 to say, have you understood all these things? And he said, yes. Then he told them, for this reason, every scribe who has been discipled in the kingdom of heaven is like a homeowner who brings out of his storeroom new treasures as well as old. That's also another deep revelation by Christ. So in other words, the Lord is saying that word scribe there, the English word scribe, it means a writer, a scribe, or a secretary. That word is grammateus, where we get grammatical from. So if you know how to write things down, if you know how to rightly divide a word of truth, if you've been schooled in the kingdom of heaven, the Lord said you can bring forth new treasures as well as old. What does that mean? That means old revelation. You can revisit them. That means new things that God is saying now. That means things that can help people understand what it is that you're saying in whatever time period you're preaching or prophesying in. Okay? So this parable of the net is powerful. It's powerful. It's powerful. And it's something that we need to be preaching and teaching in our churches so that people understand not to wait. Not to wait. Do you know Prince who just died a couple years ago? Prince, you know, the famous musician. Do you know that Prince died without a will? All them songs, all that intellectual property that Prince has, how could he possibly die without a will? Probably because so many people that he thought that he had more time than he did. Okay? But we don't know how much time we have. We don't know how much longer we're going to walk the earth. And that's why God says, the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. If you listen to me right now, no matter where you are in your life, do not wait until a future date to get right with God. Get right with God through Jesus Christ right now. Because as the word is going forth, this is your opportunity. You don't know how much longer you have to walk the earth. And none of us know how much longer God is going to allow this age to go on. But Jesus said one day it's coming to a close. Okay? And we need to learn how to be scribes in the kingdom of heaven. We need to learn how to rightly divide the word of truth. To understand, he said, have you understood all these things? to understand what the Lord is saying. But don't be like, now, now one of the best examples I can give you in the Bible is Noah. Didn't nobody in the Bible look crazier than Noah? There's not one single person in the Bible look crazier than Noah because how are you going to preach for all them years? It's going to rain, it's going to rain. Rain's coming, it's going to rain. I'm building this ark. I'm building this ark. I'm getting animals in. You need to get right. It's going to rain, it's going to rain. And everybody laughed at Noah until the day came where it was time to go in the ark. The Bible says that the Lord shut the door. That means that Noah couldn't have opened that door even if he wanted to because God shut the door behind him. And I want you to imagine being Noah and I want you to imagine hearing all those people dying outside around you as that rain falls and it doesn't let up. And as the water rises and comes above the trees and comes above your house and comes above whatever buildings they had and comes above the mountains and all the people die drowning, gurgling and screaming, scratching and clawing. Can you imagine when Noah got out of the ark? Can you imagine all the scratch marks? from all the people that was trying to claw to get in. But it was too late. You can't be too good to be saved. You can't be too bad to be saved. You can't be too late to be saved. And people don't understand 
all this laughing and all this making fun of preachers and prophets and all this stuff that people say now, this is the age where God has given you a chance to become a part of his kingdom and stretching out his net. And if you laugh at it and you slap his hand away and you spit it back in his face, the day's going to come where it's going to be too late for you. And then you're going to try to bargain with the Lord. And then you're going to try to say, well, Lord, you know, me and you were always good. And I always believed in you. And I was a good person. And I went to church a couple times a year. And I put some money in the offering and plate. And all the stuff that you think is going to mean something in that day. But it's not going to mean anything in that day. Because it's too late. All the days are in. All your deeds are recorded. All the pages have been filled out. And the book of your life has been written. And that's it. Okay? So, again, I want to encourage those of you that are listening to this broadcast, if you are not saved, if you are not born again, if you're not a Christian, and you know you're not right with God, I challenge you, I beseech you, I urge you by the mercies of God himself that you get right with God right now, that you become born again right now. Uh, if you don't know how to do that, I'll show you how to do that. If you want to become a Christian right now, the way to become a Christian is A, B, C. A, admit that you are a sinner. B, Believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God come down from heaven, that he died on the cross for your sins and was resurrected on the third day and ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of the Father. B, you got to believe all that. And C, you've got to confess that with your mouth as you believe it in your heart. So getting saved is, is as simple as A, B, C. Admit you're a sinner, believe in Jesus, and confess that. Say it with your mouth as you believe it in your heart. And that's what makes you born again. That's what makes you saved. Because salvation is a gift. Salvation is God reaching out his hand to you, offering you eternal life. Because Jesus paid the price for your sins. But you must personally accept that for yourself. There's no group on in God's kingdom. You have to personally accept his offer of grace and salvation. And if you're listening to me right now, you need to do that right now. Do not waste another minute of your life not being saved because you don't know how long you have and you don't know how long we have. Okay? All right. Amen and amen. So I'm really excited about these teaching about the parables. I'm really excited about preaching what Jesus preached. Um, so I've got about five more to go. I'm going to uh, talk about next time the um, managing the business accounts receivable hiring the laborers, inviting guests to a wedding celebration, the wise and the foolish virgins, you hear me talk about that one all the time, and business investing or talents. And these are all places where the Lord talked about what the kingdom of heaven is like. So by the time I get through, I will have gone through uh, 12 or 13 parables, well 12, where the Lord talked about the kingdom of heaven is like this, the kingdom of heaven is like that. So we can get the right idea about what Jesus was preaching and teaching so we don't keep preaching and teaching the wrong thing. Okay, because the Lord didn't preach to go to heaven when you die. <laughs> the Lord preached the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, which is right now. Okay, all right. If you have any prayer requests, put them on the screen right now. Uh, uh, remember, I told you at the uh, beginning uh, to put your prayer requests on the screen. If I don't uh, see them as you put them up there, because everything doesn't always come before me on the screen. If it does, I'll pray for them. So just put them on the Facebook page or the Twitter or on the YouTube channel, wherever you're watching. Put your prayer requests there. When you see me close my eyes and pray in tongues, I'm asking the Holy Ghost, if there are any more prophetic words, any financial prophetic words, any healing that needs to come forth, and any deliverance, any demons that need to be cast out. So that's what I'm doing now. Okay. All right. Didn't get anything. So uh, I guess that's it for tonight. So amen. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you, thank you to those of you that watch me live. God bless you to all of you that are watching on the replay. And again, like I said, at the top of the hour, go to my website, prophetdavidtaylor.org. Uh, oh, Lord. Okay. Something is coming up in my spirit. Uh, hold on. It's a prophetic word. For behold, my children, says the Lord, the time is yea and even now that I'm calling all of my body to snap into place and I'm calling every member of my body to get in their place in me 
to get in your place in me and no longer wander, no longer go in and out, no longer waver and go to the right hand or to the left. But let me establish you and strengthen you in your place in me and in my kingdom. And I will use your life mightily and I will make you a pillar in the house of God and you will go no more out. And I will cause you to bless nations as you continue to find your place in my body and continue to allow me to nurture you and give you grace and give you mercy. So come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I will show you your place in me. I will show you what I want you to do. And you don't have to wonder and you don't have to wander anymore, says the Spirit of the living God. Amen and amen. And that's what the Lord's been saying to us since the end of 2014. If you didn't know it, God called for an end to religion at the end of 2014. That no more denominationalism, no more separation, segregation in his kingdom. But we were all supposed to come together so that each member of his body, the eyes, the nose, the clavicle, the wrist, the hands, the elbow, so that each member of his body could get into place. So through that prophetic word, that's what the Lord is saying. That if you're watching this right now, don't spend another minute of your life going back and forth, being double-minded with Christ. You know, one day you say, one day you're not, or you kind of halfway in with the Lord. Come all the way in. Come all the way in and get into the place that God has called you to be. And God said he'll make you a pillar. He'll establish you. He'll strengthen you. He'll bless you. And he won't just give you a blessing. He'll make you be a blessing. And he'll cause you to become a blessing to others. Okay? And that's what time it is right now. That's what all this teaching has been about so that each member of the body of Christ, regardless of your age, your ethnic group, your gender, or your socioeconomic status, your level of education, your geography, wherever you are in the world, your family, your culture, you have a place in God's kingdom. You have a spot on Jesus' body. And the Lord wants you to get in that spot. And just like all of your organs and your bones and everything about your natural body does what it does when it's working right, that's what God wants you to do. He wants you to get in place and do what he created you to do so his body can work right. We got to do that while it's time. We got to do that while we can. We got to do that lest the door be closed, lest the net be pulled in, and we run out of days. Okay, so again, I will repeat, those of you that are listening to me right now, do not waste another day. Do not go to bed tonight and you know that you're not saved. Get saved. I just show you how to get saved. And if you're already saved, Pray that prayer I showed you. Say, Lord, pull me into place. Snap me into place on your body. Lord, pull me into your purpose, your divine and eternal purposes for my life. And let me walk in your perfect will from this day forward. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Pray that prayer so that the Lord Jesus Christ can pull you into where you need to be. Okay? All right. So like I said, I'm excited. About this teaching, I got about five more to go. Uh, you can always watch me live on Facebook like now, the second Thursday of every month. I'm also on every Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time with a weekly live prophetic word. Go to my website, prophetdavidtaylor.org, O-R-G, and you can find all my latest stuff, my latest prophetic word. I got my book out, my prophetic devotional. I'm going to have some more teachings I'm releasing this year. My prophetic locator words are there. So all that stuff is on my site, prophetdavidtaylor.org, and my music. I'm relaunching uh, and my music and also bringing out a whole lot of new music and a whole lot of new and good stuff this year, and I'm super excited. So again, thank you so much. If you want to support my ministry, my Zell is prophetdavidtaylor at gmail.com, and all these links are on the YouTube video or the Facebook Live video, okay? All right, amen, amen. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching the replay. Uh, have a good rest of your night. Have a good rest of your week. And I will see you Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time for my weekly live prophetic word. Amen and God bless. And remember, preach and teach what Jesus preached and taught. Amen and amen.